happy Friday. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Cheyenne. This is my kitchen. Welcome. Today, I have a very fun video for you guys. It actually happens to be my birthday tomorrow. Since you know it can be pretty hard to go out and find a vegan pastry slash sweet, let alone a vegan birthday cake, I thought I would maybe film what I'm doing this year for myself and share that with y'all. I thought that would be fun. The two cakes I'm gonna be making are both from this cookbook, Vegan Goodness. It's actually a really awesome cookbook. The author's name is Jessica Prescott. The two cakes I'm making from this cookbook are the matcha cheesecake, which looks like this, hopefully, <laughs> ideally. I'm really excited for this one because I think it's fully raw, so that'll be new and different and interesting. And then the second cake I'm gonna be making is this recipe for straight up chocolate cake. Ideally, it'll end up looking something like that. <laughs> I liked this one because it integrates fruit and chocolate. I'm not a huge like sweet person in general but if I do have sweets I do usually like to have some fruit component in it just to brighten it up so yeah I'm definitely excited to make this one the matcha cheesecake is conveniently gluten-free so that's really nice so yeah without further ado let's get started at a glance these are the ingredients that I'm gonna be using to make the first cake the matcha cheesecake as you can see it's nothing too crazy you are going to need access to a food processor or a high-speed blender which is actually going to take care of the crust and actually the filling as well so yeah this is unfortunately pretty essential but as long as you have that you're pretty good we've already toasted the coconut flakes and sesame seeds that's what that is and right now my first step is going to be to boil these cashews and soften them up a bit because right now they're just raw so as i just said our first step here is going to be putting a pot of water to boil for the cashews to make sure they're nice and soft and ready to blend as the water is heating up we're going to go ahead and start chopping up our dates for the crust a neat trick rob likes to use is to actually coat the blade of the knife in coconut oil in order to prevent sticking just makes the process a whole lot easier than it would be otherwise and these dates were actually already pitted so that was definitely a plus Another good trick is to place a damp paper towel under your cutting board to prevent it from sliding around. I know not everyone has rubber grips on their cutting board, so I thought I would share. This is just what I do to make sure things are safe. Once the dates were chopped up, we actually decided to go in one more time and chop them extra fine just to make it a bit easier on the Nutribullet since I don't have a food processor, which the recipe calls for. Once your water has reached a full boil, go ahead and drop in your 8 ounces or a cup and a half of cashews. Those are going to be in there for about 15 minutes, so we're going to turn our attention to compiling our crust ingredients in the blender. Here you're going to add in your chopped dates, your toasted coconut flake and sesame seed mixture, and one fourth of a teaspoon of sea salt or kosher salt. I like to shake my mixture up a bit just to give it a hand, but once you're locked in, you're just going to go in pulses until the mixture is as homogenous as possible. Once that's done, we're just going to set it aside briefly and shift our attention back to the cashews. After the 15 minutes are up, it's time to drain them. I usually just do that by putting a colander in the sink and briefly shocking them with cold water in order to fully stop the cooking process. We're going to set those aside, let them drain, and lay down our crust. Once you're done with that, we're just going to set the crust aside and fully turn our attention to the filling. Yay! We're going to start off with a can of organic full fat coconut milk, which unfortunately comes pretty separated most of the time. In order to integrate its fat and water components, I just poured out the whole can and whisked it for a bit before measuring out three fourths of a cup and pouring that into our blender. The next ingredient we're going to add to our filling is maple syrup as a sweetener, four tablespoons to be exact. Then we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract one half of a teaspoon of salt, and what we all came here for, our matcha powder. For some reason, I had quite a difficult time opening this packaging, but once I figured it out, we were golden. I put in one tablespoon of this stuff, which pretty much amounts to two full packets, and then it was time to add our blanched cashews. The last thing we're gonna add to our filling is a handful of roughly chopped mint leaves, which I just tore up into slightly smaller pieces and threw in as they were. Mmm, look at that yummy green goop. 
<laughs> real talk though it was actually pretty tasty at this point it's time to pour our filling on top of our crust i was pretty devastated here because i forgot to hit the record button for the beginning of this shot so forgive the fact that i only got the latter half of this step but i promise there are many more satisfying shots to come in this video once it's in the pan, just go over the filling with a large-ish spoon so that it gets into all the nooks and crannies of the cake pan. Last thing we want is a lumpy cheesecake. Na na na, not in my house. And then we just plop it in the freezer and wait for a good, I don't know, three hours? Bye, see you soon, my little matcha friend. I'm just eating it from the thing. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna taste pretty good. Okay, so now that our cheesecake is in the freezer, I think it's time to move on to the chocolate cake. Like I did with the cheesecake, I'm gonna set out all the ingredients, show you guys what's up, what's necessary, and then we'll just get started. Currently, we do not know where the mixing bowl is. Oh my god, wait, I found it. It's right here. <laughs> Never mind, I found the mixing bowl. Okay, we're all good. Oven is preheated to 350. Let's get rolling. Okay, so as far as ingredients go, this cake is definitely a little more on the traditional side. I'm seeing what seems to be a very common technique of using baking soda, baking powder, and apple cider vinegar to kind of get like that rise that you would get from using traditional cake ingredients. But of course, this is all vegan, so we have to make do with what we've got. We've got some different extracts here, which I'm very excited to use. I love almond, I put a little extra of that. And the recipe says whatever plant milk you like, in terms of chocolate stuff, I usually like to use almond milk, so I went for that instead of coconut. I know it doesn't have as much fat, so the texture might be a little bit off, but I didn't feel like having coconut flavored chocolate cake, if that makes sense. So yeah, with that being said, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do for this cake is combine our wet ingredients, which include one cup of non-dairy milk and one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. We're gonna whisk that together for a moment and then set it aside to curdle. After about three minutes, we're gonna add our three fourths of a cup of brown sugar, one cup of melted coconut oil, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one teaspoon of almond extract. Now we're gonna whisk these ingredients until they are fully combined before moving on to our dry ingredients. Now you're gonna wanna mix these in a different bowl. I didn't have a bigger one than the one you're looking at now, but I would definitely recommend one for minimal spillage. In this bowl, you're gonna combine one cup of plain all-purpose flour, one half cup of cocoa powder, three fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda, and one half of a teaspoon of baking powder. Lastly, you're gonna add a pinch of salt and whisk the dry bowl together until it is fully integrated. And now it's time to add our dry ingredients to our wet ones, but gradually so that things don't clump together and get ugly. Now I'm no Claire Saffitz, but <laughs> I did my best. I guess this is the part when Rob decided he wanted to take control of my camera and hijack my channel, but um, little does he know, I'm the one editing and doing the voiceover, so <laughs> nice try, bud. <laughs> Anyways, now it's time to grease our pan. I used coconut oil because that's what I had, but you can absolutely use anything you'd like. Once that's done, go ahead and pour your batter into the pan, making sure to enjoy every single visually satisfying moment of it. Use the spatula to wipe the bowl clean, give it a couple nice taps to get rid of any bubbles, and then uh, pop that sucker in the oven. Since we didn't have a toothpick, we just used a chopstick to make sure she was done, and sure enough, she was. So then we just left her to cool for a bit. It's been a hot minute. Our chocolate cake is out of the oven. She is done. She is beautiful. She is looking quite wonderful. Thick. Thick, as Rob would say. You can cut that out. <laughs> Too bad. You said it. You own it. I actually, fun fact, I woke up a little sick today, a little under the weather, which never happens, so I'm a little shook. 
but it meant that I needed to like take a little break from filming and cooking and rest for a little bit. So now that I'm back, our matcha cheesecake has been in the freezer for quite a bit, so it should be pretty set, which means that we can start decorating both cakes. We're thinking of doing a little bit of like a pistachio crumble for the matcha cheesecake. If you hear that in the background, Rob is currently peeling pistachio shells right now. That's what that is. But yeah, in the recipe book, the matcha cheesecake has lavender flower petals on it. Did not have access to those, so that's kind of sad because that's kind of what made it like super beautiful and something that I wanted to do, but I'm sure it'll still taste amazing. But yeah, and then for the chocolate cake, we got these Justin's hazelnut and almond butter. We actually might drizzle this on both cakes, but for the chocolate cake, what we're gonna do is we're gonna melt down some chocolate chips. We're gonna melt these Enjoy Life chocolate cakes and do kind of like a hard shell. And also raspberries because chocolate raspberry cake. If I'm feeling spicy, I might add some jam in there somewhere. Who knows? But voiceover Cheyenne will definitely know the answer to those questions. So I'm gonna let her take it away. Hi, it's me, voiceover Cheyenne. I'm back. First thing we did to prep for decorating was to chop up a bunch of raw unsalted pistachios and roast them. While those were in the oven, I went ahead and took the cheesecake out of the freezer and removed the cake tin belt. Ah uh, yes, the reveal. She was looking small but sturdy, so I wasn't mad. Now onto the chocolate drizzle. We heated up both of the nut butter packets along with a few chocolate chips and some coconut oil. We made sure to melt it on a very low heat so it wouldn't burn. Once it was all smooth and creamy, we poured it into a little beaker just to have a little more control over the actual pouring it on the cake part, and then I just went for it. Then it was time to lay down our toasted pistachios, and let me tell you, this took a hot sec. Totally worth it though, will not lie. Wait, we can't forget about our other cake. After removing the belt on this one, we went ahead and popped it in the freezer just to firm it up a bit. I washed my raspberries. Oop, come back here. <laughs> For the ganache, we just added a crap ton of chocolate chips to whatever was left from the previous mixture and let that melt completely. Finally, it was time to coat the cake. God, that was so satisfying. But we couldn't get too complacent because we had to add the raspberries at just the right time so that all hell wouldn't break loose. Then it was time to go set it in the freezer for, I don't know, an hour? After it was set, I removed the paper towel and proceeded to dust it with some lovely vegan powdered sugar. Don't worry, you guys. I covered all my bases. All right, time for the big reveal. She makes the rain fall from my eyes. cakes are done, decorated, and that means that they are officially ready for my party tonight. Yay! I'll see you later. Boom. I had a lot of fun making these cakes. Of course, things didn't go exactly to plan. The cheesecake we put in in a pan that was a little too big, so it's a little too short for typical cheesecake size, but you know, I'm sure it'll be delicious. And the chocolate cake came out pretty good. I think there was a, there was a moment there where I thought we were gonna lose a couple raspberries, but we succeeded in sticking them back on and putting it right in the freezer so that everything stuck together. I think that the powdered sugar was definitely a nice touch really brought everything together but yeah i guess there's not much more to say here i guess i said i guess twice in that sentence it's obviously getting very late <laughs> like i said i'm feeling a little under the weather so <sighs> definitely not at 100 percent today that's besides the point what i do want to say to you all is that if you're not subscribed yet and you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and to give this video a like also if you're not following me on instagram yet be sure to do so i'll put it right here that being said i hope this video inspired you to make some some vegan baked goods it's totally accessible and totally possible if we really wanted to we could have probably made both of these cakes in about like one and a half hours max 
works. I think the first one was super easy because it just used the blender and it was basically raw. And then you just have to freeze it for a bit, but this is like, this doesn't even take any work. You just put it in the freezer and forget about it, you know? So yeah, I would definitely recommend both of these recipes. I'm really happy with how they turned out and that is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far and I'll see you next Friday. Bye. What are we gonna do with all these leftover toasted pistachios? Stashers, what are we calling them? Stashers. <coughs> Bless. Jesus. The way way been a great day with you. Then a day pay for two. Then a center better safe pay for rules. Fool on the hill, should I been on the real and I've been on my own.